welcome to your last chapter, or pardon, last learning objective of chapter number nine, long-lived assets. Here we look for the accounting of the derecognition of PP&E. That is what happens at the end of a long-lived assets story. Few terms. When looking for our derecognition, we have some steps. So we have some steps and I have included some details on the screen. So this might be a screen that you pause and record in your notes. So the first thing that we do is in the year that we are going to derecognize or sell it, we depreciate it up until the fraction of the year uh, that the disposal happened. For example, if um, it has a regular, our company has a regular December 31st year end, uh, we have this asset, it's been on our books for a few years, and we sell it March 1st, we would need to depreciate it for whatever our regular depreciation rate is, times by two divided by 12. So that we update depreciation up until, for that little stub period of the year prior to when we sell it. All right, so then we are left with the carrying amount, which is gonna be the cost from learning objective one, minus accumulated depreciation from learning objective number two. Cool. Now we would take our gains or losses on the disposal. Now people, this number three can either get really complicated or really easy, but here's the thing. Put some numbers to it. Even if you're not given numbers in a calculation, you have to think about this theoretically. Just put some numbers, put some random numbers and put it into context. So if you have a, an asset and it was worth $100, but after doing steps one and two, you had a current carrying value as of March 31st of 25. And then you sell it for 30. Huh, well you made a gain of five because it was on your books at 25, you sold it for 30, that is a good deal. Your proceeds are more than the carrying amount, you got yourself a gain. Conversely, it's on your books at 25, you sell it for 20, proceeds are less than the carrying amount, people, you got yourself a loss. This gain or loss goes to your income statement. It really just meant that you weren't a perfect calculator of depreciation in the future, right? So it means that as you depreciate it over the however many years at plus two months, that you didn't depreciate bang on exactly. You know why? Well, depreciation is an estimate and estimates by nature are wrong because if you had better information, it would be called an actual. So you guessed a little right, got a gain or I guess, Gets a little wrong. Um, either way, you got a gain or a loss. So if you um, depreciated too much, you have a gain because you got more back than you thought. And you didn't depreciate enough, well, time to do that last little bit and we'll call it a loss. Uh, both go to the income statement. Okay, so the next slide, it's easy to kind of get wrapped in. Just take this, because um, it talks about uh, steps four. I just want you to think about the next part as basically reversing all of our journal entries um, that ha are related to our asset that's on the books. So basically we just gotta like get rid of it or have a credit to every debit and a debit to every credit and then book the difference to the gain or the loss. Okay, so let's take a peek at that. We got some cash, we're like, thank you very much. Or accounts receivable, maybe a note receivable. Uh, we plug that in here. Then we reverse our accumulated depreciation. We reverse the uh, asset itself. Remember, this number right here, minus that number, that was our carrying value. And then we're like, oh, thank you very much for your $30. We reverse the accumulated depreciation by debiting it because it's normally in a credit balance. Then we credit the PP&E itself, the original cost, normally in a debit balance, so we credit it. Boom, the difference is either a gain, which is a credit, or a loss, which is a debit. But people, I fill in all the other items first, and then I make sure that the last one here that I, I don't wanna call a plug, but that I calculate it and put it in here, as a result, I make sure that makes sense and matches my expectations. Um, if we retire something versus sell it, basically the same, except up here, the line that says cash or receivable or other asset, this would just be zero, meaning we just wouldn't have the line. So don't have the line because you just didn't get anything. We just retired it. And the line down here, we would put in a little explanation saying retirement of an asset with no proceeds received. All right, so your turn. Uh, I'd love for you to uh, 
Um, let's see, I think we might have a couple. Let me just take a peek. Yeah, you're gonna have to um, grab the details from this slide. So I want you to write this down, I'm gonna talk with them, and then um, just know that in the uh, next slide, um, it's gonna continue on. So give this, give this one a go, and then just know that we're gonna keep these um, fun facts and bring it into the, our next example. So I'll pause it here, calculate it, we'll debrief, and then we'll do kind of part two in just a second. All right, talk soon. All right, so let's do number one together. And so we are going to see what is our depreciable amount. And our depreciable amount is going to be that cost less the residual value. And so our depreciable amount is our $16,000. Okay, and no, no marks for pretty, but communication is key. All right, let's continue on. We have a depreciable amount and what's its useful life, four years, all right, and so uh, we can go here, um, four years, and this is years, this is useful life, and so this means that we are going to have $4,000 uh, in depreciation expense uh, each, each year. So then the question asks, um, what's the depreciation expense for each of the first three years? Uh, well, we can just say this is year one and under version um, one or question one, year one, year two, year three, uh, this is all going to be the same and it's going to be the $4,000. Oh my gosh, right? I know. I know better. All right. And so now um, when we are looking at number two, and we want to see what is the um, depreciation expense under each. Um, we are looking at double diminishing balance. So that is when we take our carrying value and we times it by our rate. And then that gives us our depreciation uh, expense. Okay, so our carrying value is gonna be 17,000. Remember, we do not do anything uh, this is year one. We don't do anything with residual value under this uh, diminishing balance or double diminishing balance or triple diminishing balance. Any diminishing balances, we do not care about residual value. Nope, that is straight line only. All right, so what is our rate? Well, our rate is going to be equal to our... Um, that is gonna be equal to our straight line rate times by our multiplier. So in this instance, it is going to be equal to, I'm like 25% times two, so it's 50%. So let me just make sure, yep, fabulous. You can see um, that's our one year divided by four years useful life times by two. Uh, two is our multiplier because it's double diminishing. And so we get our depreciation expense in year one and that is gonna be 8,500. Okay. I'm gonna put this here just so I can start seeing the comparisons. Holy crap, yeah, no kidding, double diminishing and then some. All right, um, now carrying value. That is equal to my opening from last year minus my depreciation expense, and I get my opening carrying value of 8,500. My rate stays the same for all years, and I get my depreciation expense times my rate is equal to 4,250. All right, all right, almost looking the same in year two. All right, let's take a look at this. And so my opening carrying value is last year's opening minus last year's depreciation times by 50%. And so now my depreciation in year three is 21.25. All right, so at the carrying value at end of year three, and that is going to be equal to my 17,000 less these depreciation items. And here, my carrying value is gonna be equal to 17,000 less all of my accumulated depreciation for here. Yes, I know, I know the question didn't ask this, but I am curious. And so, just interesting. Hmm. And then at the end of this year, it'll be uh, end of year four, it would be 1,000 for here, 
And it would be, I don't know, let's, for funsies, let's just take a look. Um, this is year four. This is going to be last year's one of the, and this will be at the end of year four. This isn't my idea of funsy as well. Too bad. Just kidding. Um, and um, so at the end of year four, this is equal to um, this minus this. All right. And pretty close. At the end, if we kept this on the books and we were like, hey, let's keep going. Um, you wouldn't have any more depreciation under the straight line, um, but you would have another like $500. Basically the thing just keeps like getting half, half, like half and half and half. Um, and we would just keep going. This would stay on the books at the carrying value of 1000 and this would keep going down by 50% each year. All right, let's take a look at part two. All right, I will just put the slide back on. <laughs> Fabulous. And um, we'll talk soon. All right. So take a peek at this and pause the video, answer each one of these items. So again, it's the same Raheem Corporation who purchased the boardroom table for 17000 whose residual value is $1,000 at the end. Um, first type of depreciation expense calculation is straight line. The second is double diminishing. So we have three different scenarios and yeah, we'd love to see your responses for each. Uh, when you unpause the video, we'll come back and we'll do a debrief and then we have one more slide and then we're done. So take care and talk soon. All right. So, um, Raheem got some cash. Awesome. Let's book the cash. And how much did they get? They received $5,800. Fabulous. All right. And so they're also going to have to credit accumulated depreciation. And they are going to need to um, credit for P, P, and E, um, the, the table. All right, so we know what this is because it's what they bought it for. That was our 17,000. And then what was it? It was at the end of the third year. So we take the accumulated depreciation or the depreciation expense under the straight line for the first one. And so we know that that was this much plus this much plus this much. And fortunately, they did it at the end of the third year, so we didn't have to do any you know, step twos, um, partial year depreciation. So thank you for that. Cool. All right. So on my one side, I have 5,800, which is 17,800. And on this side, I have 17,000. So if I wanted to do it the plug way, I would realize that I needed to credit here. And if it's a credit, it's a gain. And then that's how I got um, these items to balance. Uh, another way to think about it is um, if I had a netbook, or if I had um, purchased it for seventeen thousand minus uh, my accumulated depreciation of twelve thousand, I have it on the books of fifty eight hundred. Somebody wants to give me uh, five thousand. Pardon me. Somebody wants to give me fifty eight hundred. Cool. They gave me eight hundred dollars more than I thought I was going to receive. So this is to calculate disposal of table um, under, what would this be? Under straight line method, SL straight line method. Cool, all right. Let's see what would be the same, same, and what would be different under um, option number B. Number B, letter B. All right, so this is our double declining. All right, so our cash would stay the same. Our accumulated depreciation would change. And we might have a gain, we might have a loss, um, but our cost of our pp &E remains the same. All right, um, so let's take a look at what our accumulated depreciation is. And so that would have been the depreciation expense from year one, plus expense from year two, plus year three. And so now we have, funky formatting, uh, we have 20,675 on this side, and we have 17,000 on this side. So we are going to need an amount on this side to balance it out. And how much are we going to need? Well, let's see. 
this is the lazy plugging way and we'll do the, the real way in just a moment. And so we have a credit here to balance it out and this would be a gain. And this would be to calculate the disposal under number two, the uh, double decline, declining method. All right, so why? Well, because we have our pp &E that was um, recorded, um, our carrying value was 2,125. Somebody wants to give us 5,800. So really, 5,800 minus our 2,125. 58, let's try this again, 5,800 minus 2,125. We're getting a gain of 36.75. Cool. All right. So what is the total net income uh, depreciation plus any loss or disposal of each method over the entire three year. So here, let's just go back up here. Um, no, let's go right underneath. So here we have, um, we would have $12,000 of depreciation, right? Because um, it's cumulated depreciation would be 4,000 each year minus the gain because it's going the other way. It's almost like we got a little like depreciation refund. So we had a total uh, impact to the income statement of 11,200 under option A, which reflects the straight line method. And so this would be three year net income impact. And that would be for this one. Let's make it a color. This is Actually, just move this over a little bit. And this is our B. And this will be smaller. And this will be bigger. Okay. And why not? Let's insert a row. Cool. And let's see what our three year impact over here would be. Um, I know this is like AB, AB. I know I'm very sorry because this was our original AB. Okay. Uh, so net year impact um, from the, um, I'm just going to say straight line and mm, straight line, net year impact, double declining. Okay. And so this would have been our cumulative depreciation minus our offset by our gain and <laughs> how this is been. The suspense, 11,200. So you see the impact to the income statement is the same regardless of what method you use. Uh, we're just trying to, with depreciation, reflect the reality of how much of the asset is being used each year. So that's why uh, we have that there. All right, so then it brings to uh, C, which type of depreciation method do you think is most appropriate for this boardroom table and why? Well, in hindsight, uh, this method, the straight line method, uh, not only is it quicker, less prone to error, takes less time, but it also appears to be more accurate because our gain um, and or loss, uh, the thing that gets you closest to zero means it's most accurate, means that each year your reflection of the, um, the expense, the cost of the asset was reflected appropriately uh, each year. That said, if you were to ask this question after year five or after year one, maybe uh, the correct answer would have been um, double declining. All right, one last question. We'll go to the slides and then we'll, we'll close out this chapter. All right, so the big picture question and the things that kind of get us into the Accounting is a tool um, that helps you understand what companies or corporations are doing to help you kind of understand um, the, the language of business, uh, the stories that are going on. So would management be able to influence the calculation of depreciation based on their personal bias? Pause this video, please give it a think and support your yes or no answer. All right. So uh, the question is, yeah, they probably could. Uh, they can influence it in a number of different ways. One would be in um, really collecting all of those costs uh, to you know get that asset into operations. You know, some people might um, find that red light camera uh, ticket. They might find all the insurance. They might you know add it all up to the cost of the asset. 
Uh, or they might say, oh, I forgot about it, or oh, no, I just wasn't as diligent, or oh, it's not material. Um, so that's more of like the, well, that's sloppy. But as far as the actual inputs, uh, so the residual value, where does that come from? Well, it's what is the present value, what do we think we're actually going to be able to uh, get for this asset at the end? You know, do you go and get the Kijiji number, or do you go and get the wholesale number, or do you go and get the, you know, where is the source of your data and what bias are you um, interjecting in order to get that number? Uh, another thing could be the useful life. Uh, you know, if you have a range of useful lives, uh, which one are you selecting and why? And then, uh, of course, what we just talked about, uh, and hopefully what you were uh, wondering about, is the depreciation method. You know, are you going to be doing the straight line? Are you going to be doing the double de declining? Are you going to be trying to front load the expenses through double declining or triple declining or declining? Or are you going to try to smooth them out? And what is your personal bias? If it's uh, maximizing your bonus this year, you're probably going to want to go towards the, uh, the straight line. And if it's, you know, leading up to having a really good year in five years, you know, it's probably the other one. Or there might be another bias. There's so many biases that could come into this. And the thing is, um, you know, auditors will question assumptions. Um, they will, you know, dig into finding the numbers. They need to be reasonable and justified. However, at the same time, uh, these statements are a reflection of management and their estimates. So understanding how these numbers can be influenced uh, is a great way to understanding the language of business. Alrighty, thank you so much for your time and attention this week. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll talk soon.